and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad. Here's the grace of God in 3D, living color, audio-visual, right? How do you see the grace of God? Well, you saw the grace of God in the lives of the people who had been the recipients of that grace, who had responded to that grace. There are multitudes of people who never read this Bible, but they can read the same truths that they could read if they ever opened the book. They can read those same truths in the lives of people. What a marvelous God. What wonderful grace this is. And when Barnabas, the man whose life was characterized by grace, he recognized it. He knew what grace was in his own life, and he recognized it in others. And he said, there it is. Clear and simple, he saw the evidence of the grace of God. This 85-year-old man, about a month ago, I was out in Salmon Arm, British Columbia. An 85-year-old man, his wife's been saved for 25 years, has prayed for him every day. But he'd been double-crossed by his two brothers, and he just couldn't get over it. If you talk to him for five minutes, I mean a stranger on the street, he'd get into the story. And there he was, 85 years old, still fussing about losing a farm or something. I went over to talk to him, and we went round and round with it. And I explained the gospel. He said, I know it's what I want. It's what I need to do to get saved. But he said, I don't know. There's just something there. Well, it wasn't too long to find out what it was. Because we'd get right to the cross, and then his two brothers would pop up. And he'd say, you know, the only thing, I just want to get, uh, maybe I can go and buy that farm. I said, man, you're 85 years old. You don't need a piece of dirt up in northern British Columbia. You need a place in heaven. Yeah, yeah, I know that, you know. And finally, I said, look, we're not getting anywhere. I think I better go. And he said, don't leave me. Don't give up on me. He said, I want to get saved. But every time, we would do this time and time again. And finally, I read him that passage, when a strong man armed keeps his palace, his goods are in peace. I said, man, you are the devil's goods. And he's got you where he wants you. He's got you enslaved by this, this anger, this unwillingness to forgive your brother. Now, I said, the only way that's going to get fixed is if you first discover salvation in the Lord Jesus, and he'll give you love for your brother. Now, this man was so angry with his brothers, I mean, he couldn't say enough nasty things about them. But you know something? When finally he got down before God and began to pray, before he had finished his prayer, asking God to save him, he said, I've been a, I've been a, well, he called himself a stupid old fool. And finally he reached out to the Lord and received God's forgiveness. And before he stopped praying, he asked God to save his brothers. The grace of God is not some theory. It's not some funny little notion. It's, it's real. It's something we live out in the daily experiences of life. We don't try to imitate it. We don't try to manufacture it. We receive grace. And that grace manifests itself in the life of the people of God.